Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark, and we are in Mark chapter 1. We are starting verse 43 this lesson, but before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we said last lesson, Jesus healed this leper and he, he cleansed him and he uh, touches this, this leper after he's cleansed. And basically by touching him, uh, he's letting the people know that he's clean. But there is another, there's a process to go through for this leper to be declared clean. <clears throat> and that's where we get into now in verses 43 to 45. This part is very important. So he says here in verse 43, and he straightly charged him and forthwith sent him out. Now, as I also said last lesson, Jesus wanted to make sure that this leper was officially pronounced clean by the priest. In Leviticus 13 and 14, uh, chapters 13 and 14, a leper, if a leper was cleansed, it couldn't, it couldn't be where the leper could just, you know, go amongst people in cities and in towns and villages and interact and have communication with them. But they had to be, you know, before they could do that, they would have to be declared clean by the priest. So Jesus is, Jesus cleansed him. And now Jesus is making sure that this man is declared clean according to God's law by the priest. Because if he doesn't, if he's not declared clean by the priest, then maybe he wasn't cleansed at all. That's the impression that, that people who didn't know this man, could, he could go out and start testifying. I was a leper and, and I was clean now. Well, what's the priest? Give me the priest's name so that I'll know that you were a leper and that you were clean. Well, I never went to a priest. I didn't go, I didn't go and de get declared clean. Well, then you were probably never a leper. And it would take away the effect of Jesus's ministry, take away this miracle that Jesus just did. So there's a process here that is that Jesus is going through in order to, for this man, but also for a testimony to the priest. Now, we're going to get to that. So he says here, and he, meaning Jesus, straightly charged him. Now, this Greek word for straightly charged is embrimamai, embrimamai. And it comes from brimamai, which means to be moved with anger. So when it says Jesus straightly charged him, it kind of means that this Greek word used here means to snort like a horse like a horse would snort. So Jesus sternly charged this man, or you could say he earnestly admonished this man, or you could say also <laughs> Jesus almost threatened this man to go to the priest. So he heals him. I shouldn't say heals. He cleanses him. <laughs> Jesus cleanses him. And then he says, go to the priest. He, Jesus is ad, absolutely emphatic. Get to the priest. Go to him and get declared clean. All right? He's straightly charged. This is a, he, he, Jesus doesn't say to him, you know, well, you know, it would be a nice thing. Uh, you know, it's uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. Can you kind of go to the priest there and get declared clean and make it? No, no. This was Jesus. He, he's cleansed. And Jesus, now get to the priest. Go, go. Come on, get, go. Go to the priest. This is very important. So, and then it says, uh, he char straightly charged him and forthwith sent him away, sent him away. Now, this Greek word for sent him away is ekbalo. Now, ekbalo means to throw or to thrust something out. So, Je <laughs> Jesus literally thrusts this man out from the crowd to go to the priest. So it's, <laughs> you have to picture Jesus cleanses this man. And as soon as he cleanses him, 
What is he? And Jesus straightly charges him uh, and forth with sin. He, it's like Jesus is, there's this crowd of people all around. Uh, we don't know how many, there could be hundreds of them. And, and Jesus cleanses this leper. And then as soon as he's cleansed, he, it's like Jesus is pushing him toward, <laughs> pushing him toward, go, go to the priest, get out of here. Don't stay with the crowd. Don't say anything. Because you'll you'll ruin the test you'll ruin your testimony. Go to the priest first and get declared clean. That's that's the next step. Get out of here. Get to the priest and and get declared clean. Now, why was this important? Why would Jesus be so stern with this man? Probably, probably because. He was, this man was very excited about being cleansed and would not want to go through the ritual of being declared clean. Remember, there was a process. If you want to read about the process, read Leviticus chapters 13 and 14. There's a process about how a leper goes from being, being unclean as a leper to being declared clean. And this man is so excited that he's cleansed. He's looking at himself. No leprosy. This brings up all new possibilities for him in his life, right? And uh, so he's 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 excited. And Jesus is pushing him towards towards getting get out, get to the priest. And this man might not want to go to the priest in a hurry. He might want to enjoy this this uh, being cleansed, you know, and, and might not go through this. The, the, the process of being declared clean by a priest. So the priest, why was this important? Because the priest <clears throat> would have to investigate the claim that the man actually had been a leper and then investigate his present condition. So the priest, so this is going to be a testimony not only to the people, but the cleansing of this leper is a testimony to the priest or to the priests there about who Jesus is. So, so the because the priest would the he would this leper this former leper would come in and say I was a leper I need you to declare declare me clean. Well, the leper I'm sorry the priest would have to would have to investigate. He would have to ask around the town to see was this man a leper verify if he was a leper and then he would get verification yes this man was a leper for x amount of months or x amount of years and then he would have to investigate is he clean now and then but he would not only investigate the priest would have to find out how he was healed and the man would have to testify that the one who claimed to be the messiah healed him well, or cleansed him. I'm, I'm using the word heal. I keep, I'm sorry. I keep, <laughs> I keep using this word heal. It should be cleansed. Lepers are cleansed. They're not healed. But anyways, so the priest would have to investigate, was he a leper? And then he would have to ask the man, ask, how did you get cleansed from this leprosy? And the man would say, well, it's this man, the man who claims to be the Messiah. He's the one who cleansed me. He's the one who did it, Right. And then the priest, the priest would then have to investigate this claim that Jesus was Messiah and then present this evidence to the Sanhedrin for further investigation and a final decision. The healing, listen, the healing, of the, the cleansing of this leper would cause the religious people to have to make a decision about the person and the character of Christ. So this cleansing of this leper goes far beyond just Jesus having compassion on this leper and cleansing him and sending him out into the world. Oh no, 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 this is a testimony. This is a testimony. This is causing the, 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 the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sanhedrin to take a look and to see who he really was, who Jesus really was. This man who claimed to be the Messiah and who just cleansed this leper. And he definitely was a leper because we did our investigation and he definitely was a leper. 
Uh, we, have, we have 150 people that can declare that he was a leper. And now he's cleansed. And this man, this leper, this former leper is telling us that it was this man, Jesus, going around healing people, causing all kinds of, ha, causing all kinds of problems in the, in, in Galilee, in Capernaum area, right? He cleansed him. And then they're going to have to investigate and bring it up to the Sanhedrin. Oh, yes, this is a big deal. It's going to be a testimony to the Sanhedrin of who, who the character of who this, this man named Jesus really is. Therefore, Jesus not only told him to go to the priest for his own benefit, but also, also to be a testimony to the religious people about who Jesus really was. Now, verse 45 says, but he went out, actually, let's read verse 44, and said unto him, see that you say nothing uh, nothing to end. Don't say anything to any man. He pushes him out. Remember, he's pushing him out of the crowd towards the, towards going to the priest. Don't say anything, right? See that you say nothing to any man, but go your way and show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing those things which Moses commanded for testimony unto what? Unto them, unto the priests, as a testimony unto the priests, right? So what does he do? Verse 45, but, but, oh, that, that, that word but can change all kinds of things. But he went out and began to publish it much and to blaze abroad the matter insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in the desert places. And they came to him from every quarter. You know, the old... The old saying, no, no good deed goes unpunished, is true here also. No good deed goes unpunished. And you know, this man was so excited that he kept proclaiming to all around what had happened to him. He neglected to go to the priest to regain his social recognition again. And because, because of the increased popularity of Jesus, it seemed that Jesus could, could not minister in the synagogues anymore, but was forced to minister in open or in desert places, in, in areas outside the city. The word city here in verse 45 has no definite article, meaning any city or all cities. It means that, that when it says here um, that Jesus could no more openly enter into, it should say into any city, into any city, because there's no definite article in front of it. So it seems shocking to us how a person could so irrespectively disobey anything that Jesus commands. Shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't fire come down from heaven, right? But he did, and he, and we see the results. I mean, he did disobey Jesus's desire, Jesus's basically his command to go to the priest and do, be, do it the way Moses says in the law. Go to the priest, be declared clean. He, he refuses to do it. And we see the results. Think of, listen, think of the times in our lives when we disobeyed. How did it hinder? How did our disobedience hinder God's work in our life and through our life? We thought th because of our excitement, that we could do more for God. But maybe, actually, maybe we achieved less for God. Serving God with our human effort or our human strength will never bring God's desired results. 
let's, sim let, let's simply do what God wants us to do, whether we understand it or not, and trust him who sees the end from the beginning. Let's trust God, who, who, God who sees the end from the beginning. Let's trust him and, and obey him and his word. And when we do, the results are tremendous. The results will be, let me say this, the results will be God's results. The results will be God's results. Listen, Jeremiah preached for, Jeremiah preached for 50 years, not one convert, not one, but that was God's will. That was God's will for his life to preach for 50 years and not one convert, not one. So just because, just because we obey the will of God doesn't mean we're going to see great results. What it means is that we will see that as long, just do the will of God. Just do the will of God and trust him for the results. Whatever the results you see, it's God's will. All right. You, you just, we all we have to do is obey God and not get worked up in our emotions and get excited and start going off on, on in our own ways of how we think we're going to serve God. Right. But uh, let's serve him according to his will. All right. Until next lesson, we're going to start chapter two next lesson. But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.